The computer system on the 300 and on all the facilities instruments are currently running Windows 10 operating system and Topspin version 3.6.1. There could be slight changes in the software with future releases. If you downloaded Topspin version 4 on your personal computer there could also be slight differences. The system has two monitors. This helps with the operation because there are two main programs that are running and each is usually displayed in a different monitor. Typically, the left monitor will be running a program called Icon NMR or Icon for short. The right monitor will show the main window for a program called Topspin. We will look at both programs in details in later videos, but briefly, ICON is the program that a user interacts with to set up the steps for automated data collection. Topspin is what we use to process the NMR data. When you first sit at the computer, ICON NMR should be open on the left side monitor. You should find it in its logged off state, and the ICON NMR identify user window open. If not, this means the previous user has either not logged off or the identify window was closed. Either way you should always left click on the change user button to log off the previous user. Scroll down the list of accounts to find your advisor's name. Select it, and click on the OK button. The password prompt should be displayed. This prompt window can be on the right side screen. Once you find it, type in the password for your group. You will receive this password during the training session. Then hit the return key or click on the green arrow. This should unlock icon for entry. You should always check that the correct account is logged in. In the lower right of the icon window is a field with the current user account. It should show the one you selected. If not, hit the change user button and log in to the correct user account. Let's take a look at the different sections of the main window for icon. At the top is a menu that most users will not use. Perhaps the most useful is the holder menu. It has an option that will allow a user to delete all the completed runs when the experiment table is full. You could also delete completed runs by selecting the rows and hitting the delete button or key. Other than that, the menu is reserved for more advanced operation. Next is the row of buttons that are used for starting, resuming, pausing, and stopping the automation. Starting the automation should be automatically done when a user logs into ICON. You can see that this button is grayed out, indicating the automation has already started. Your user account does not have permission to stop the automation. If you hit this button, the program will ask for a password which is different than your user account. Therefore, this row of buttons has little use for the average user. However, if you ever submit an experiment and nothing happens, it is a good chance that the automation has stopped and needs to be restarted. To the right of the buttons are a series of icons that will display the status of the sample that is running, or has run previously. The main panel called the experiment table is where a user will mainly interact with icon. This table is used to enter information and to queue up experiments that icon will automatically run. Just below this table is a row of buttons that are used while entering experiments above. Their functions are clearly defined and we will demonstrate them in the next video. I already described the change user button that is also on this row to the far right. The panel below shows a list of previously run experiments. The list is usually in the reverse chronologic order, with the most recent on the top. However, this can change if you click on the column headers. When the list is in reverse chronologic order, the top row will show the current running experiment. The columns are also clearly marked. Most of them are directly transferred from the experiment table above. The middle columns that have the check marks show the same progress status as the icons in the top right of the window. The remarks column will show any errors that the program encountered during that experiment. When the line is read there was a potentially serious problem with the run, and if data was collected you should review it very carefully. Please see the staff if you have any questions about error messages. Let's take a closer look at the experiment table. This is the panel that you are going to be using the most. This table is comprised with a series of rows that each represent holders of the sample changer. The 300 has 24 rows since its sample changer has 24 holders. This number always remains constant. Note, that the other instruments in the facility have changers with different numbers of holders. The columns in the experiment table are labeled fairly clearly. 
Some of them are populated automatically and others will require user input before an experiment is submitted. We will look at these columns in more detail in the next video. Each day at midnight the system will automatically reset the name of the dataset. The name is based on the instrument and the date. Our naming scheme starts with auto to represent that the data was created with the automation. This is followed by a number. In the case of the 300, this is a 3. The 400A will have 4. Following is the 6-digit date code in the format of year, month, date. Each experiment is saved as a numbered folder in the current day's dataset. This number starts at 1 and is incremented by 1 for each experiment submitted. This number cannot repeat during the day and you should always check to make sure that it does not attempt to duplicate a previously used number. The system will not allow overriding of existing datasets, but it will also not run your experiment. It is important to remember that the experiment number does not have to match the holder number. The changer does not have to start at 1 each day and we ask users to always load their sample in the next available holder. This should match the next free row in the experiment table, but you should always check to make sure you are at the correct position in the table and recognize that you might have to delete old and previously run experiments from the holder your sample is in. When the table reaches the bottom, it will roll over to the top, just like the carousel can rotate from 24 to 1. You need to keep track of both holder number and experiment number as you operate the instrument and submit samples. However, the experiment number is what we want you to record in the log book under the column labeled last sample number, not the holder number. The log book helps a user know if the system is attempting to run an experiment number that was previously run. The carousel should be in a position to inform the user where to place their sample. This concludes our icon overview. In the next video we will show how to enter and submit experiments. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have any questions please see us in the facility.